G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Patch 2.7 Red Skies is around the corner and of course we are looking forward to some brand new vehicles. But with every patch comes a new set of, uh, I guess we can call them patch predictions. We're going to be having a little bit of a chat about the MiG-23M and the lack of F-14 and of course the F-5E Tiger II. I think that's what it is, the F5E Tiger 2. That sounds about right, but let me know in the comment section below if I'm correct. Also, let me know if you would like to hear me do a little bit of like a Q&A or a personal talk about how the channel is going at the end of my videos. Let me know, of course, in the comment section below. But of course, let's have a chat first off about the new vehicles. First off, we have the MiG-23M. And the MiG-23 is a swing wing, a high wing jet aircraft. It's a fighter or fighter interceptor. And of course, it's served with the... Uh, Soviet Air Force and of course the uh, German Democratic Republic's Air Force. I can't quite remember what that's called but uh, at the end of the day we have a MiG-23M that's going into the Russian tree and has potential to go into the German tree later on. Now this is equipped with up to six missiles and two of the uh, missiles that it gets uh, can be swapped out for I think they're R-23s. You get two variants of the R-23s. You get R-23Ts which are, I believe they're the radar guided ones. They're basically like an AIM-7, but uh, as you'll see in the current test drive footage we have, they're kind of a bit shorter range. They're a lot similar to the French semi-active radar homing missile. And of course we have the uh, R-23S, which is an all aspect missile, but the all aspect is at 1.3 kilometers. So if you think about that, you are pretty much going to have to be one and a half kilometers to get a lock, and then you factor in the enemy going head on with you, you factor in a whole other host of things, as well as the missile being a little bit more on the bulky side. Your enemy is basically going to have to be close to slow or stopped if they're going to be doing anything head on, but at those higher aspect ratios, it might actually prove to be useful. This is the first all aspect missile that we're going to be getting in War Thunder, and it is coming to the MiG-23. It's only going to be on the MiG-23 as far as I'm aware, and not only that, there are no other counterparts for any other nations, because to my understanding, the first all aspect IR missile that the, uh, that the West d designed and developed, um, I guess apart from one of the Matra Magics, I think it might be the Magic 3 if I am not mistaken, that was the first one for the French. And for the Americans, of course, it's the AIM-9L. The AIM-9L is already on the AH-1Z in uh, War Thunder, and obviously would be a little bit too strong for our current level of top tier. So what I'm thinking here is that Gaijin have smart, very, very smartly introduced all aspect missiles in a plane that is not particularly well performing. It might be fast, but that's just about all it seems to have. From what I can gather, the MiG-23 doesn't really pick up speed that well. It has a fairly good top speed, but at the moment I think it's slightly bugged. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but you can't really push past 1300. Uh, I think it's 1350, uh, but I, I really think that is quite correct. Regardless, the top speed is going to be fairly high to compensate for the lack of turning. This plane is going to be a bus, and it's going to play very similarly to the way an F-4 Phantom might play, where you would have to work your way down systematically, but of course it would be a worse F-4 Phantom with shorter ranged missiles, at uh, those, those of the radar homing type. Um, but of course you can switch them out for R-60, so you can carry a total of six R-60s, but to be honest, I'm, I'm not really sure where I stand on this. The R-23s are kind of meh from what I can gather. I'm not sure if they're unfinished or if they still need a bit of tweaking, but if they go to the live server like this, then sure. I think that these are going to be some pretty like average missiles. You might even consider taking the R60s over these, depending on how things go. So it does have a bombing computer and it does get, I think, the KH-23s, which are the uh, laser-guided missiles, which are, you know, they're okay, but they're for ground targets mainly. These particular plane I think is going to be more of a support fighter. I genuinely don't think the MiG-23 is going to be of some serious competition. It turns about like a Phantom and it picks up speed, not quite like a Phantom, but a little bit less. It's probably a really good 11.0 support fighter and we will get into that 11.0 battle rating in a second. So 
Our next competitor is the F5E. Now the F5E is very similar to the F5A except it has a lot more thrust and more weapons loadout options. So like the F5, like F5A, the F5E is likely to remain as a support fighter, only having two AIM-9Js, which of course we are already well familiar with, and the F5E also has the same cannons from memory. It does also get a lead computer, much like the MiG-23M, but honestly I don't really find it useful, nor do I find it uh, particularly valuable for any plane, with the exception being maybe the T2F1 combo, but I don't think it even gets them anymore, so what is that to really talk about? Anyway, these particular planes are, like I said, more to be relegated to support fighter duties. The F5E is excellent at low speed dogfighting, but of course its acceleration is not quite the same as that of the MiG-21 BIS. So you're kind of looking at a budget version of the uh, F4E for the Russians in the form of the MiG-23 and a budget MiG-21 BIS in the form of the F5E. I quite like the way that dynamic plays out, especially considering that now both of the major players in this tier have different types of vehicles that they can play around with and different types of uh, weapon systems that they can also play around with, that being supposedly long-range semi-active radar homing missiles and of course in the form of a, I guess a mechanic, you are more than able to dogfight your opponents with the F5E. With of course the MiG-21 BIS and the F4E being the mainstays there. For me, this is a really interesting dynamic and it kind of explains why we don't get things like the F-14. One of the things you have to remember is that the F-14 was and is light years ahead of things like the MiG-23. From what I can gather by chatting with people on Twitter and on Discord and with other people who are a bit more knowledgeable on the topic, uh, it would compare somewhat more to, from what I can gather and what I, I've heard some people say, things like MiG-29s. The F-14 is a is supposedly a massive increase in, or a massive step up in uh, the capabilities of the American naval fighter branch. And so it would be unwise to introduce it with something like the MiG-23, even though they supposedly go together in a matchup. The Americans just have some insane fighters and the Russians, they just want to put things out first. And so it ends up being rushed. And what do you know? Not quite as good as its opponents. Where do I see that in Gaijin? Hmm, I wonder. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we have the 11.0 battle rating. So far, the MiG-23M is the only 11.0, but to be honest, I see a lot of potential for that battle rating now. So, BR 11.0, who could go to 11.0? I obviously see the F4E, the MiG-21 BIS, and the F4EJ heading straight that way as well as basically every other 10.7, with the exception of maybe the J35D and the Mirage 3C. They would probably be the only two, maybe the Mirage 3E as well, because that thing is a steaming pile of dog shit, and I would be more than happy for planes that don't have any semi-active radar homing missiles or bad semi-active radar homing missiles to uh, sort of remain in that 10.7 realm. Although I do think the MiG-21 SMT and the MiG-21 uh, MF could potentially be 11.0 candidates as well. But they don't have flares, they don't have great avionics. Well, the SMT does, but the MF doesn't have great avionics. And uh, honestly, I, I see a bit of potential there as a good 10.7 for the MF especially. This would alleviate a lot of that area that I was talking about earlier with my uh, battle rating decompression discussions that I've had over the last, oh god knows how long, months now. Absolute months I've been talking about this, but um, I digress. These battle rating changes could potentially alleviate a lot of the stress that planes like the MiG-21F and the MiG-21PFM are facing, and now that could potentially just render the down tier down to 9.3 not only counterproductive but also useless because these planes would not be getting as many up tiers and they wouldn't be getting severely up tiered like they otherwise would be. And for me, Gaijin probably is not talking to each other in terms of their departments, and to be honest this doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Gaijin seem to work that way, but for now we have a little bit of potential and of course we also also have different battle rating changes to come in months after the patch. So we always have that to look forward to to rectify any potential issues, uh, but for now I think an 11.0 change is the right direction. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a potentially good patch ahead of us, provided that everything else goes to plan and there are no absolutely game-breaking bugs. There are some pretty good additions, especially for ground forces. Uh, I don't really talk about ground forces a lot, but there are plenty of decent ones, uh, mostly filling in da gaps in tech trees. And, of course, we have the Sea Vixen, which is an interesting plane, but uh, realistically, it's going to be dog shit. And the only people that are going to be playing it and going to be wanting it are going to be the people that like the Sea Vixen in real life. And you know what? I'm one of them because I saw an RC model of them once and, uh, you know, it, it's just cool. So you can probably expect it. It'll probably be a glorified javelin, to be honest. But you know what? It'll probably be fun as well and we can likely have some good fun with it. Not only that, but the changes to rank 6 and rank 7 coming into the game are going to be quite nice as well. You're seeing a couple of planes that would otherwise have been a little bit left on the shafted side, uh, finally getting their correct rank, and of course those being the VTOL jets going up to rank 6, and some of the vehicles that have been sitting in rank 6 with missiles that are way too good, or avionics that are way too good, going up to their appropriate rank, which is very, very nice. Rank 7 as well is going to be filled out some decently enough. Uh, but of course, Britain is still suffering, which is absolutely normal. And we all know that War Thunder is designed so that Britain suffers. I'm, I'm kidding, of course, but we can all have a good laugh about the British tech tree being a little bit on the sore side. The FGR2 is, from what I can tell, not getting any love, but I would really love to see it get AIM-9Gs at the very least. Not only that, we also have the F4F, which, of course, predicted like clockwork. Coming into the game at 10.7, which will probably go to uh, 10.7 and maybe stay there. Maybe it'll go to 11.0. We'll have to see how it pans out. But of course, it gets some good ground attack capabilities with some Mavericks. And of course, we have the AIM-9Js strapped to the uh, underside of the belly. It is an, in basically an F4F early with a little bit of better stuff, and that will be also good to look forward to. The Germans are getting themselves a Phantom finally in the regular tree, and just like I predicted, it is after everyone has spent all their money on F4F early and being a fanboy. And like I said, Gaijin likes to make their money off fanboys, so don't be a fanboy. Just play the game, enjoy the game, and, you know, if you're... If you like something or if you want to grind something, go and buy it. But of course, use your discretion and think of what might come in the future. Anyway, ladies and gents, I think that'll do us for today. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a little Q&A type thing or a little how the channel is going or how life's going or whatever. And um, maybe I can do that towards the end of the video. If you would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, you can always have a chit, a chick, a chit a look, a checkout of the links in the description below. You know, Twitter, merch, Patreon, Twitch, all that sort of stuff. I do like to stream on Twitch, especially on patch day. If I'm not busy, then I will probably be there. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.